Philippa says, I blog at least once a week on LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn personal page with links back to my website and business page. And I post twice a week on Instagram and Twitter. I am really struggling to grow my connection on my posts outside of my usual gang. I have a serious message about how to make your business more sustainable with lots of top tips and downloadables, but not getting the engagement. My most engaged posts feature the introduction to the team of my puppy, Gertie. Any tips gladly received? Um, okay, so I went digging and let's see here. First of all, Let's look at your website. Because honestly, with everything that you've got going on, um, it really, is Philippa here yet, by, by the way? Yes, I am. Oh, great. Okay. So really, you're going to have to spend some time on your messaging. And uh, I want you to, re have you read Donald Miller's story brand? Uh, no, I don't think I have. Okay. So I really, really, really want you to get that book ASAP and I want you to read it before our next call. Um, you're going to love it. It's going to help you across the board with your connections, your, your, your engagement, your LinkedIn, everything that you're doing everywhere. Okay. Um, and so I can't, I don't want to go into like the book is going to explain it, but it talks about like having a very clear message right in the beginning. When you come to the website, it should say exactly, exactly what you do, who you help, how you help them. Bam. That needs to be the first thing that we see. Um, all these tabs, he tells you across the top, it's distracting and unnecessary, but you can keep it on your website down at the bottom in what he calls a junk drawer. Okay. Um, and so that's, so that's really important is the clarity of your message, exactly who you help, how you help them. Um, and that's a thread for me that is going to go through, like, I looked at all your stuff and that is really, um, I really think that is where you need to start. You use, which is, which is appropriate because you have a corporate background and a lot of your clients are in the corporate world. And so the, that corporate lingo that you use is, um, that's the norm, okay? But now that you are becoming a marketing genius, you're learning that when we use words like that and we use phrases like that, they become invisible. Nobody hears them. And so the reason you're here right now in the front row is because you want to stand out from, from, the, from the crowd and you do have an important message and you want people to hear your message, okay? So I'm just going to give you an example. Um, okay, let's see. Welcome to Utree, the interactive online platform to engage greater action on sustainability and well-being. Okay, in the chat, tell me if... Um, uh, if you understand that, not, I mean, everybody like, you know, do you understand that? Does, do you immediately just, do you have clarity on that statement my, to my people in the, in the zoom room? You could just nod your head or shake your head too. Cause I, we can all see each other. So for me, it's not, it's for me, it's not clear. Like I'm like, okay, let me read that again. Um, then we work in target driven environments. I don't know what a target driven environment is looking for ways to increase value and reduce costs. Okay, how, how to increase value and what ways increasing value, reduce costs, we all get that. And we often have wide ranging responsibilities that touch the whole organization. Um, we've been in your shoes and understand that when you look for a tool to help upskill staff, it often falls short. Real engagement is more than just attending an environmental awareness session. Creating buy-in that drives sustainable action requires a mindset change in our staff and Utree has, has been designed to do just that. It's called Utree as it speaks to the user and starts with the you, exploring what you actually value and how you show up in the world. So you clearly understand what it is you are saying like I, I get that but for us the reader there's there's a lot of gaps we it, it and and we have to fill in like what you what you mean um and so 
the after you read the book, you're just going to have light bulbs go all over the place. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I just want to say say that about your web page. Then we're going to go over to LinkedIn and um, your. I don't want to look at really at your at your company page. I want to look at your because I really think you're going to get you're going to get most of the action. You can link to stuff that you post on your company page on LinkedIn, but I think that you're going to get most of your um, engagement over here on your your personal um, LinkedIn profile. Okay, and so if we look at your profile here, okay, about. Um, so I, I read your bullet points and I think they're good because I think you've done a really good job at like pointing out the pain points of your ideal client. Um, and, but when we get down here to about me, you end up shifting into the third person into that resume style lingo. So it says about me with a background in environmental management, predominantly within the automotive sector. Philippa is a highly regarded sustainability practitioner, ISO certification auditor and trainer, yada, yada, yada. And then you continue to talk about yourself in the third person. We just happen to have a LinkedIn expert in the room with us. Uh, Dumont is here with us today. So Dumont, please, you know, put whatever you want to say into the comments um, uh, here. But, you know, this could just be, this, this could really... A lot of people do this in LinkedIn because we could, we think of it as so buttoned up and, you know, and this is where we need to be like more professional and, and that's not untrue, but you really have an opportunity to, it, to just really jump off the page and set yourself apart here and make it engaging. Tell a story, you know, it's okay to do that in your, in your LinkedIn profile. If I look at your, um, and, and then also I'm not seeing anything highlighted here. Uh, okay, activity. Um, you've commented, you shared some articles, um, you've got your past history here, and let's click on here. Let's click on one of your, if you're struggling at the moment to find some inner peace or just need a break from the online meetings and workplace, then I have created this for you. Awesome, a meditation. Okay, that's that's great. And you got a lot of engagement on that, actually. I mean, I know 11 likes and eight comments doesn't feel like a lot of engagement. That is, that's a really, that's, that's a nice engagement. So uh, good for you. So that tells me that like people, people like this kind of content for you. So, so, and as you go and look at your analytics, um, then maybe you create more, more content like this. If I go back to your, um, I know what I, I wanted to say. When I go back here, the sustainability ninja, guiding high achieving SHEQ managers through leading edge ESG initiatives. Okay, I, your people, I guess, know what that means. I don't. Um, so it might be okay if everybody you know knows what that means. I don't know what it does what that means. Reduce frustration and leverage your team to integrate sustainability throughout the heart and DNA of your organization. So really what I'm missing when I look and also here is that, okay, so you talk about the pain points in these bullet points, but when we get to the solution, you said um, after working as an HSE for 25 years and conducting auditing services, I saw firsthand the inefficiency and ineffectiveness that was preventing organizations from implementing robust and holistic sustainability initiatives. I know what works and what doesn't to save you and your company time and money. What I can do for you, identify and enhance your leadership EQ to create greater fulfillment of work while also elevating your status as a leader. Provide innovative sustainability company-wide training. Create greater staff engagement and understanding to reduce incidents and increase identification of money-saving projects stimulated by the sustainability implementation to meet KPIs. So I'm starting to get my like fuzzy again. And so I'm, I want, so this is what I think you need to do. Let me get to my notes here. One is case studies. So clearly you've been at this a long time. I'm sure that you have a lot of very happy um, uh, clients, former clients and current clients, you can hire a, um, 
a case study company that will literally, you give them the names of your customers, they will contact your customers and they will ask them the right questions and they will write a summary. A lot of them will do graphics around it. They'll create beautiful like PDFs. But I do think we need to see specific ways that you came in. I want to know stories. I want to hear about Helen who was, you know, struggling to keep her own boss happy because he was asking her to create the sustainable, you know, work environment, but her KPIs were falling off a cliff and, you know, all that. And then, and then, and then she hired you and you came in and these are three specific things that changed because she worked with you. So, um, so I definitely think you need to get to work um, with some case studies. So number one, Donald Miller messaging website, all across your social media, we need to work on that. Number two, um, the case studies. Number three, live streaming. Um, if you aren't currently live streaming, I think you need to apply for live streaming on, on LinkedIn. And in the front row, I can help you a lot. We have so many trainings on live streamings, how to do it well, all the technical stuff behind live streaming. I'm here to help you and guide you. Love to see you do live streams. Um, and, and then I was thinking, and I don't know if this would work for you, but I think a nice offer for you would be, I noticed that you have like a discovery call, but I think that, um, and you know better than I about your industry, but like, if you were to offer, and I'm just going to throw a, a price tag that may or may not make sense, but let's say you offered a, um, an initial audit, right. Of, and, and they had to pay $800. It's not free. So like, for $800 or $1,000 or 2,000 pounds or whatever makes sense, you will actually come in and audit certain things, like a short list of things you're going to audit. And then you are going, if they if they end up hiring you, they, they can get maybe that $800 or $2,000 back as, you know, it'll yeah. be built into the retainer or something. But what's so wonderful about that kind of framework is that you have an opportunity to go in and really shine and dazzle them with your astute observations of where they're falling short, right? So you literally, they're paying you to come in and then you, and, and it really can be cookie cutter um, process. Uh, it can be turned into a process to some degree. I mean, I love the idea of something like this, that you, you have a template, you've got your slide deck and after you get certain key points of information, you can hand that off to a virtual assistant who really does the whole slide deck for you. You go in, zhuzh it, and then you go back to the people, you give this marvelous presentation, and of course they're going to sign up for you because you've just pointed out all the gaps. Now they need you to fix it. So that's, you know, that, um, I love that model, and I just wanted to throw that out to you. And then, yeah, so, 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 you have your work cut out for you. And it, to me, it begins, it really begins with your, with your, with your messaging. Um, and you're going to love this book. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Any questions or comments? Um, the, the only thing is my, my target audience is HSEQ managers. So they, I am speaking to them in their language, but my Good. new, but my new um, Sustainability Ninja is a new product I'm bringing out, which will be a membership scheme. And that's going to be aimed at smaller companies who haven't got a HSEQ manager in place. So they haven't got like a specialist person doing health, safety, environment, quality. They're, so they're the, it's like going to be more of a drip feed handholding exercise. So that's I'm preparing that at the moment. Well, don't prepare it anymore until you read this book and then go back to preparing it because okay. it's just going to help. It's literally, he gives you a, a, and I mean, I'm talking like, just put it on hold for two days, read the book and then go back to it because you will, they are different people. They don't speak the same language and you're going to need to segment your content um, to reach those people, you know, reaching that. I don't know the, uh, the H S H. Okay, those people as, that you just said, they, yeah. 
um, reaching them on LinkedIn is actually really easy because you can search for those job titles, you know, and, um, and, and keeping that lingo in place for them. Um, but now you've got these, these other people um, who are really a different audience in a lot of ways. So th the book is going to help you, um, is going to help you with your messaging in reaching both, both audiences.